Hello, this is Travis Moore coming to you again uh, with part four of a five-part series on Open Door Island Ministries in the Philippines. Let me remind you that I have this uh, prayer card uh, that I would like to send to you if you would like a copy. Uh, it's just a reminder to pray for me uh, whenever you see the card. Maybe it'd remind you to uh, lift me up before the Lord in prayer because I'm going to need a lot of prayer. Uh, I'm going back over to the Philippines to hopefully spend the rest of my pr productive life doing uh, missionary work. I don't know how long that will be. I'm 72 years old, and maybe I'll live to be 73. Maybe I'll live to be 82 or 92, and maybe some of those years I'll be weak and sickly. Maybe I'll live uh, strong until the day the Lord takes me home or comes back uh, in the rapture. But either way, uh, whatever time I have left, a productive ministry. I hope to be planting churches and winning people to Jesus uh, in the islands of the Philippines. Uh, I'll remind you again that uh, my theme for these videos is Isaiah 24:15. Glorify ye the Lord, even the name of the Lord God, in the isles of the sea. There are literally thousands and thousands of islands scattered throughout the seas of the world. But the particular islands that I have an interest in and a burden for are the islands of the Philippines. And so I'm going to be going there uh, in just a few short weeks from when I'm making this recording and uh, finding the right place, hopefully, uh, where I can start uh, setting up ministry and uh, reaching people with the gospel. I talked to you in the previous videos about uh, how my wife and I did that in the past and some opportunities that uh, seem to be opening for us uh, in the future. Now my wife passed away about four years ago and so I'll be going there as a single missionary and, uh, and starting a ministry there uh, in the Philippines. When we first started planning to go to the Philippines in 1974, my wife and I uh, studied some scriptures in the New Testament that talked about opportunities being opened for the preaching of the gospel. And a phrase that kept coming up over and over again was an open door. And so we adapted that concept, I guess you would say, of an open door ministry and when we arrived in the Philippines, uh, that's the way we kind of tagged everything to uh, form some continuity for our ministry there. We had Open Door Baptist Church, Open Door Telecast, Open Door Broadcast, Open Door Christian Academy, Open Door Bible College, Open Door uh, Island Harvest Ministries, and uh, things like that. And it kind of formed a continuity. But when I go back, I'm going to be working uh, with our original church that we started in 1974, Open Door Baptist Church in Talisay, Negros Occidental in the Philippines, and working not there with the church, but using uh, the church as my home base, going into other areas where the uh, gospel is needed. Um, and so I want to share with you the biblical uh, basis and concept of that today. Revelation 3 verse 8 says, I have set before thee an open door. In this passage, the Lord Jesus is writing to the church in Philadelphia. Now, not Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but one of the uh, old churches back in uh, what used to be called Asia. Today it's called Turkey. But at a, uh, the turn of the first century, there were a group of churches that uh, John the Revelator uh, sent the book of Revelation to, and he penned these letters from the Lord Jesus at the beginning of the book. And when he got to the church of Philadelphia, the message of Jesus to the church in Philadelphia was, I've set before thee an open door. Now that could have meant uh, several different things, I suppose, but I think the primary focus seemed to be an open door for ministry. And no one could close that. God had opened it, and only God could close it, is the idea that I get from that passage. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 3, uh, the Apostle Paul asked the Colossian Christians to pray for him, 
that God would open a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. Now, the mystery of Christ is how that Jesus came and gave his life and shed his blood for the forgiveness of all men, of all cultures, all races of people, and how that he would bring together people from every tribe and people's group and tongue into his marvelous, glorious kingdom. Now, the Apostle Paul needed to have a door of utterance opened. I feel the same way. Uh, I don't speak uh, the Philippine dialects. I know a little bit of a couple of them, but as far as a fluency, I certainly do not have that. But there are 175, I think, different Philippine dialects. English is kind of the medium between all of them, thankfully. And so I will be able to communicate with people there, and I'll be learning some more of the language, I'm sure. But I want God to enable me to speak the truth of the gospel in a way that the Filipino people can understand it and believe it and trust it and be born again. In first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, Paul said this, When I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, a door was open unto me of the Lord. You see the concept again of the open door. He went into this new town, this new city, and he went there to preach the gospel. And God opened a door for him. And I believe that's what God is doing for us, for me particularly, uh, in the coming weeks and months as I return to the Philippines. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 16, verse 9, the Apostle Paul said, A great door and effectual is open unto me. Now that word effectual is an old English word. I doubt you've used that word all day. Probably not all week. Probably not even all month. Okay? We don't use that word much anymore. But it simply means effective. A great door and an effective door has been opened for him. Paul believed that to be true about his ministry, and I believe it to be true uh, about the ministry we had back in the 1970s and 80s, and the ministry I'm about to embark upon once again. A great door, an effectual, has been opened to me. One more passage in the New Testament that talks about the open door is when Paul and Barnabas were returning from their first missionary journey. They had gone around and preached the gospel in many places. And after about a year, maybe a year and a half, they returned to the city of Antioch from which they had been sent forth with the gospel. And it says that they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. You see, God has to open that door of faith. I can't push it open. But when God opens the door of faith for the Gentiles, in my heart, for the Filipinos, and see them respond and embrace Jesus with all their heart and trust Him and are born again, and then want to go out and serve Him, what a wonderful opportunity that really is. So the concept over and again is that of an open door, an open door, an open door. Now, with that in mind, uh, years ago, uh, I wanted a song about Open Door. And I asked my wife to write me a song where I, Karen was a very accomplished musician. She played the piano and the guitar and the organ, organ, the organ, and she, uh, and she sang beautifully. Uh, but she never was able to write the song that I wanted. So one day we were home on furlough and I was driving through Texas and words started coming out in my mind. So I don't remember if I pulled over the side of the world and wrote them down, or maybe I had a little, it would have been a cassette tape recorder back then, I'm sure, and uh, recorded the words or how I, I don't remember how I uh, kept them in my uh, mind and kept them straight, but I was able to put them together and a, a little tune came to mind and I went home and shared it with Karen. And then she worked with the music part and took the words I'd written and put together a song. And she sang it uh, a few times, not very many, but she sang it a few times. Uh, and then it hadn't been sung again uh, since then, or since, uh, very few times since then. But not too long ago, I found an old cassette tape from 1979 
with Karen playing the guitar and singing the song for the first time. It just broke my heart. It thrilled me to hear her sing it. Now, keep in mind, it's from an old cassette. And so uh, there's a little distortion there. The music quality is not going to be what you are used to in the modern digital age. But I was able to digitize it and put it on my computer. And I'm going to put the words on the screen. And we're going to listen to Karen sing Open Doors. open door. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video today. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, that will help me a lot, and share it with others if you would. And if you'd like one of my prayer cards, let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to uh, send you a copy. God bless.